I think there was a fire in here. Look at that. Hi guys. Another mailbag video. Let's have some fun. This is a donation from a very nice person in Germany. Thank you, Klaus Peter. This is too kind, really. Look at that. This is a very rare old tube amplifier by Pioneer. It is already stereo. And it has a built-in stereo radio tuner receiver. Oh, it is large and heavy. We will have a look inside, okay? Oh. Wow, this is amazing. So why do you still need tube amplifiers? Well, they sound kind of different and it has uh, many different reasons. Uh, a very important reason is the output transformer. You have absolutely no uh, parts of DC voltage because of the output transformer. This is uh, something other manufacturers also add to their amps like Macintosh. No, not Apple Macintosh, Macintosh Audio. Oh yeah! Wow! This is wonderful! Ah, awesome! Thank you, Klaus-Peter. Thank you very much. Ah, here is the pre-amplifier section with ECC 83-12AX7. Uh, here is the power amplifier driver. And of course he kept the uh, very rare and expensive 7189A tubes. That's absolutely fine and that's a given. Here's the tuner front end with a large variable capacitor. Lots of tubes and stuff, very exciting. Power supply section. Here we see a DC choke coil and a very old and vintage caps. I'm sure they need to be replaced. These are the famous Pioneer uh, output transformers. Wonderful! Here is a magic eye in German magisches Band. It indicates the signal strength. Here is missing a cardboard for insulation. So there's a high risk to get a short circuit. 
this has to be fixed. Here are the wonderful paper in oil capacitors by Suzuki. They are oil filled, they have a ceramic body. Ah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a lot of work to do. Hmm. These caps have to be replaced, that's for sure. Ooh. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. There's already leakage on the complete chassis, but the capacitor was already replaced. Here we have a German cap. This is not original. Wow, the complete unit was messed up by the old capacitor. Wow, <laughs> look at that. Oh my god. Wow. Something terrible happened in here. I think there was a fire in here. Look at that. What do you think? Leave it in the comments. And I think the transformer has been replaced. The screws don't match up correctly here. So I would guess this is not the original transformer. This is typical Pioneer part. So it is probably a true uh, Pioneer transformer. Old, old, old Elna caps. Wonderful. This is a sign for leakage. Uh, then it draws current and through the internal resistance it gets hot and then yeah this is very typical here's a look at the variable capacitor this is not original too yeah here's a lot of work no doubt <laughs> Nice. Elna oil cap. Hmm. I'm more like this design here. With the ceramic body. Awesome. I did a repair and service video of the Pioneer SM83 from the same era. So this uh, won't be a complete uh, repair video. This is... Wow, I have never seen something like this on a Pioneer equipment. Hmm, beauty. Uh, sorry, I don't turn it on right now. I have to do a little bit of service. Volume knob. Oh. With balance integrated. Tone controls. Awesome. What a beautiful and classical design from Bioneer. Here's a size comparison with the classical SM83. And you see that this unit is slightly larger. The amplifier section is kinda the same. I would say this one here is more advanced. Great. And this is inside the SM83. 
it is classical hi-fi high-end audio. Remember, this was built at a time where all the other manufacturers already used transistors. Pioneer used tubes. This was one of the first tube amps by the meaning of A. Hey, Let's build a tube amplifier instead of a transistor. And I really love the sound of the SM83. If you ever have the chance to uh, get such a unit, grab it, service it and have fun. Be sure to have the original 7189A, not el 846 BQ5. They sound great too, but if you want to have the full sound, you really need the original 7189A by RCA or GE or Sylvania. That's it for today. I hope you liked and enjoyed this video. See you soon. Bye.